to receive the goal. There's nothing to beat a win at Wembley. Black, who's going to go for it? Black for the one point to win the grand final. He's done it. Hello, welcome to another live stream of talking about some life, proudly sponsored by Clips Energy. Clips Energy! <laughs> and delivery! Delivery! <laughs> uh, thank you very much for your patience and joining us. Um, yeah, technical gremlins, as always. I hate Facebook. <laughs> Matt Zuckerberg, you make things very, very hard for us to do that, but um, hey ho, we are here. Anyway, um, my name's Mike Egg, as always, um, and as always, <laughs> as always. According to Facebook, we are on. Yeah, we're not, we're not on according to Facebook, but yeah, we're definitely on. We've, we've got people on, with people watching. Uh, Mr. Rick Farrell has finally got us working after all the technical gremlins on there. Um, yes, we won, we won, we beat Swinton. On to Fev, let's get into talking about the game, shall we? Give us a like on the video. Yes. Comment in so we know that you can hear us, see us. Yeah. All that good stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you are watching a football, uh, thank, have, have us in the background. Watch to have the football on there and listen to us. That's a great compromise. Um, what, what, Every now and then we'll just go, ooh. Yeah. Uh, and hope that it sinks up. Oh, get up your diving, so and so, or whatever. <laughs> but yeah. Oh yeah, we, we, uh, we yeah we are. Well, I think we're finally we're finally onto normal stuff now. Anyway, we can see you, Linda Kitson. So we can see you. Yes, we can see you. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you very much for joining us, everyone. Uh, get your comments in. What do you think about the game? Forty-eight twelve. Um, bit of a weird, bit of a weird game. Sh- really should have had the game sewn up. What was it? Twenty-four nil at half time. Uh, Twenty-six. Twenty-six nil half time. Should have really kicked on, but Swinton have got nothing. Nothing to lose. They've got nothing to play for. They're already down. Um, they defended desperately. They just disrupted our attack. But we've got to rise above that. Um, before any kind of comments come in, I want to champion Greg Worthington. Uh, again, red letter day on this podcast. Me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no I, I thought... Uh, Scott Grit's got the man of the match at the ground. Scott Grit's had a very, very good game. Absolute belter of a dummy to, to score. But I just thought Greg Worthington was absolutely fantastic. It was, it was dangerous every time he got the ball. He laid a try and a plate for Ben Tibbs. Um, it was solid in defence. I just thought it was an absolutely fantastic performance there. Um, and yes, we'll, we'll, we'll bag players if they're not performing to the standards that we, we expect of them or, or we're used to, but we definitely will congratulate them when they are playing well. And that this is your time, Greg Worthington. Um, fantastic performance there. Um, and also, Con Robinson. How good it's seeing him back there, uh, but yeah. What, what what do you think, Rick? Yeah, I totally agree, mate. I think having having Connor back in the team gave us a completely different dimension in attack that we've been missing, yeah. even with Grixie and uh, Harris playing well. And was having that big long win streak. I think having Connor in that team just offers something completely different in his kicking game and just the way that we chime into the line at the right times because they've got that timing down between Harris and Robinson. So yeah, totally agree. Uh, on Greg Worms, I think it's absolutely bananas that. Uh, ben Tibbs has got more tries than Greg Worthington in two games. It's absolutely insane. Like, you know, for, for all the tries that he scored, and he's still, I think he's still two off a, a milestone. But uh, yeah, the young lad came in and did well. Um, great to see Connor back and a few other really good contributions across the back line. I think the forwards did what they needed to do, didn't they? Yeah. They weren't really matched in the middle. I think they, they were quite dominant laying the platform, and then the backs did the did the work and took all the plaudits. So yeah, happy with the win. and. Uh, I'm sure we'll come on to a, a big game coming up this weekend. Yeah, we certainly will. Um, we'll focus on a couple of other players because uh, um, Scott Griggs did get man of the match at the ground and and, and, and deserved it. He played very well. Um, back at full-back, and my slight issue, my slight fear was that um, his, his his legs weren't aren't as good as they were a few years ago and that sort of thing. And towards the end, when, when he got injured, he seemed to be getting a bit 
slow kind of thing, but he he laid all my fears. He, 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 it was a brilliant performance from him. He's just he's just got so much experience, and he, he comes into the line so well, and uh, he's just a presence. And I, I, I was really really impressed with him. Um, and uh, James Saltonstall as well. He's just <laughs> I saw I saw I saw him after the game and, and I had a quick chat with him. Um, and yeah, he just does not have a bad game. And um, I, I, I was watching a few. Um, Catching up on a few of our old live streams for the year, and actually discussing whether or not Salt and Soul should play or not. It just seems that you've well. You are clueless. I am the brains of the <laughs> podcast. You are. The, you're, the, you're the beauty. I'm the brains. Oh so. God, God help us in that case. Blimey. Um, but yeah, so, Salty. He's he's certainly up there for Player of the Year. Yeah. I would I would hazard to say that he should be getting actual championship honours because he's just he's just such a strike weapon and he's he's just is everything you want in a modern winger. Just makes so much yards coming out of back play. Um, he, he finishes off tries. Now, people, people were even saying he's not a natural finisher and he's just not got that instinct, but he won us the game against Bradford with a really good finish. He finished well on the outside on Sunday. He's, he's, I can't think of any more superlatives for him, to be honest with you, mate. Yeah, he's such a team player as well, isn't he? I mean, he, he offers so much, like you say, bringing the ball out. And uh, yeah, I think it would be... It wouldn't be beyond him to be in line for Championship Player of the Year. I think he's been outstanding. He does the dirty work that not a lot of people see, but he's now, yeah. and he's always done that, but he's now adding adding tries to his game, which I think at the start of the year he said that one of his main focuses, he wanted to score a lot of tries, and he's obviously our top leading try scorer so far. So yeah. long may it continue. He's a good lad as well to boot, and everyone likes yeah. him in the team. Uh, now that Tyra's gone, it seems that he doesn't get as much abuse anymore. He seems to be happy <laughs> with his rugby and... Uh, I want to give a big shout out as well to Zach McComb. I thought yes, he was outstanding. Has been outstanding so. for weeks now. He's he's almost a, an undroppable player for me going into the business part of the season. Yeah. Uh, pace and skill and good hands and laid a try on for Salty with a good pass. The centres seem to be playing well at the right time. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, Salty outstanding, but. Total team effort across the board, really. Definitely, I can't agree more. Zach, Zach McComb is, um, I think I mentioned to you, if, if there was such a thing as most improved player or or make an award of um, biggest surprise of the season, I'd put Zach McComb there because when 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 he signed for us, I was a bit kind of well, uh, well okay cover kind of thing, he, he, won't, he won't get near first team, he'll, he'll cover just in case we'll burn all or Worthington or Ed Barber's injury or whatever, but he's just been fantastic, and as you say, he's becoming undroppable, because if if, 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 you, if Simon Grit's going to pick players on form, then you can't look any further than, than McCall, either on the wing or at centre, because we're back at centre on Sunday, yeah. and he's still putting the same kind of performance, so he's, he's been absolutely fantastic, he got some recognition from um, the RFL, the Rugby Football League page for that for, yeah. for the try after the Hooter. Uh, I bet he was knackered after <laughs> running all that way. He got uh, a few uh, choice words from Grixie <laughs> for doing the Tyra celebrate, putting the arm up to celebrate before he got to the line. Yeah. But they're all in good form. But again, it's things that you love to see, isn't it? It's, oh, it's, it, 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 everyone sees what it, it means to him when they celebrate. He's, he's always in there coming up with a fist towards the crowd and stuff like that. And um, you, you can't blame it. Game was already won and stuff, like, like when Tyra did it against Bradford. Um, but yeah, um, you just love to see it, and long may it continue in that respect. There, uh, right? Let's get on some comments because we have got quite a few coming through. Um, Chris Kirsch, thanks for joining us again, Chris. Chris, and thanks for sharing our video on the on the forum. Uh, we'd love to see some announcements on re-signings for next season. More Davis brothers, Robinson, Worthington, Woodburn, Holland, Murray. Um, be great if we could keep all those, but we've got to balance the books accordingly, especially with. The the rumored signings that have that have happened, which friend of the show Matt Shaw's broke in the last week or so, um, they may well get offers el elsewhere. We don't we don't know we don't know yet. But I'd, I'd love to, I, all those men, names you mentioned there. I would definitely keep all of them. So yeah, fantastic. All in good time. We don't want to be doing it now. We want to be concentrating on the playoffs, not next season. We've still got this season to yeah. concentrate on for me. So exactly. and then it gives us something to. Uh, to focus on and to talk about during the off-season. We'll, we'll have podcast topics. We won't be going back to who's the best 13 with a beard, who's the best 13 <laughs> that wore orange boots and yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So, 
Uh, Linda Kitson, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us, Linda. Linda, we can see you. Yep. Uh, Dion Spencer, I think that's one of your favourite mates. Uh, I'll bring you that Fev shirt, Sunday, Rick, pal. Yeah, cheers, um, mate. I need something to clean my toilet with. I, I, was, I was about to say, uh, he, he's run out of toilet paper, so that'll do just the job there, mate. Uh, that's absolutely fine. Um, Chris Kirsch again, great win this week. Is he's, he's a talking point? Yep, a very good win. Um, Sean Ewell and agrees with you. McComb, yeah. for me, that lad can make yards. Absolutely, definitely does. Very much like Salter. There's not much of the guy, but he runs like a forward. It's and good he makes, technique. He makes he makes as much yards as a forward. So yeah, fantastic. Um, Chris Kirsch, Connor should sign for Panthers until his retirement. I guess you mean Connor Robinson. Uh, pff, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind. Um, I'm sure Connor Robinson have something to say. But if you're watching Connor, what <laughs> I know, he, I, we know he watches his podcast. Get, get involved. Uh, let us know. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, he seemed he seemed very happy. And he seemed to be back in the groove, and not least his goal kicker. We've actually got a proper yeah, goal no. kicker uh, once there. But he was like he'd never been away, and it was just it was just so good to see him back there. Um, Braden Bennett says we're both clue both clueless. Well, thank you very much. Living rent free in your head, <laughs> as always. <laughs> Look, it's finally how long have we been doing it for nearly two years now, and finally someone's told the truth. We are both clueless. We make no bones about it. Um, so thank you very Fev much for your honesty. Says it all, <laughs> man. Oh, is your fifth fan? Yeah. Or, uh, he would know clueless. Um, Matthew Brown, unsung hero, and McComb. That, yeah, yeah, absolutely. completely agree. Completely agree. Um, he's as I say. He surprised me massively to say that um, he's he's done so well. Um, again, he's he's, he's I kind of assumed he saw that he came from Oldham Division below, played at Sheffield. I didn't rate him when he played for Sheffield. To be honest with you, I didn't. I didn't he weren't one of the players at Sheffield where he thought, "Oh, he's a good player. Won't mind signing him." Kind of thing. Knew he was a local lad, but obviously, fat team full of fat lads. That local pride is obviously put some magic in his boots and uh, he's doing the business and he's, he's really well respected within the squad it seems like as well he's a really personable yeah. guy that everyone gets on with and that goes a long way on the pitch doesn't it but I mean uh, there were one try he scored or he might have, I think he might have set it up for Grixie where he stepped through the line and went the length of the field yeah. that's when we were like wow we ain't had footwork at the line from a it's normally as forwards doing that and yeah. it's Tangata and Cav and, and and players like that that do the footwork at the line and go through the gap so it's nice to see his backs doing it and having the pace to finish these things yeah, off yeah and, and again a, a, an outside back who can run 100 yards to, to score a try like that, that's in the 80th minute yeah, after the 80th exactly, minute exactly yeah so, so yeah keep, keep, keep it going Zach it's, it's, it's much appreciated and uh, yeah fantastic he's here Conor Robinson is here Thank you. Welcome, uh, Connor. It's uh, to you, Connor Robinson. Yes, Fats fans love you more than you will know. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Uh, yeah, what do you think, Connor? Would you stay here until the retirement? What, how did it feel being back on the field on, on, on Sunday? Uh, you can check it out in the Panthers TV interview that I did about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> Plug 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 plug, 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 Yes, nice one there, Rick. Uh, but yeah, seriously, though, Connor, it's been it's fantastic to see you back, mate. Um, it's, it's absolutely shocking that you're out for, for so long, um, but you're coming back for the business end, and hopefully, you are a nice, fresh Conor Robinson will attack the playoffs really well. Because we confirmed our place in the playoffs. That's one thing we can yep. say. We confirmed our place in the playoff, and um, I don't, I don't, I don't think. I put anything out, but I I just want to say thank you very much to to Simon Griggs, the staff and the players for for turning it around. Because I say I think we're third bottom after three games or something like that, and eight favourites. Yep, at the, um, in the preseason yeah, betting. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the the knives were out for Simon Griggs and some of the players, and and we've turned it round. Um, I never lost faith. You never lost faith. We 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 kept the faith, unlike some of you watching. Uh, <laughs> let it yeah. go, man. Let it go. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Obviously, it's, it's been and gone, but um, we've had a fantastic few months. Um, that win takes us to what was it? Ten wins in twelve or something like that. Or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but we, we we've won thirteen games from eighteen or something. Yeah, which is a fantastic achievement for, for the lads I dare the way, to be fair if, if the bounce of the ball had gone different and a few decisions here and there we could have been unbeaten we could have beat Toulouse could have beat Fair, we could have Bradford beat, should have beat Bradford yep. should, could have beat Oldham so exactly could have it, been a different story it's altogether. like we keep saying it is a bonkers Leeds a bonkers league is that uh, it is this league uh, and I'm sure there's lots of sides that were saying exactly the same thing the games that they've lost they should have won battle it May well have said, oh, they they should have beaten us at Mount Pleasant. Widness may well have said they should have beaten us at the Shea. 
all sorts of stuff going on. But as I say, wh- thank you so much and massive congratulations to to, to Simon Grix and the players for, for getting us in the, in the playoffs. Now we've just got to focus on getting that third third place there because that, that is vitally important for that. Top two sewn up, there's no chance in getting there, but we need to keep third because Batley, especially, are biting on our heels um, and Whitehaven are making a very, very late charge for all the playoffs there. We've got both of them to play, but the, the last game of the season, Batley is going to be absolute cracker, isn't it? Yeah. Absolute cracker. Um, Sean Ewell, um, good performance. Need to get Woodburn, Woodburn, Woodburn Hall in maybe at loose. No point in him sitting on the bench to replace Harris for 15 to go. Well, from my understanding, I think Harris actually played the Swinton game with a dead leg, which was pretty impressive to say that he took that ball from Saltley and went half a length for the field and yeah. and didn't get caught. So I thought that were really good. But yeah, I think he was struggling with a dead... There's a lot of lads that shouldn't really be playing at the minute. Broken bodies, Greeks keep yeah. saying it week after week. So um, having Woody on the bench there, I think he's carrying a knock himself. It's a, it's a good call to have that. Because you end up, say you put three forwards and a hooker on the bench and your halfback goes down. Well, what do you do then? You end up moving yeah. one lad that's never played there. You know, what is it, square pegs in round holes yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So I understand what you're saying. We need to get them all in the team. And, and yeah, and Sean's just come back and said, uh, Woodburn all has earned his players. Totally agree. He was yeah. Up until he, he got a knock the other week, he was probably challenging Salty for player of the year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, this is why Grixie gets paid the big bucks, as we keep saying. He's got to figure out how to get all these strike attacking players into one 17 man lineup and of course they'll yeah. live and die by the sword in terms of that but yeah i, I do agree with you yeah oh, I, I agree as well and it is becoming a bit of a trend i've noticed like watching super league they are carrying backs on the on the bench now because before it used to be an hooker and three forwards yeah. whereas now i noticed saints put wells beyond the bench if they've got their first choice line up there whether it's covid whether it's injuries catch i don't know but i've noticed a lot of sides are running with Back on on the bench, so maybe maybe Simon Griggs is is, is 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 privy to that kind of information. We know he's got a lot of contacts in the game. He's obviously very close at Warrington and that sort of thing. Maybe it, because because of COVID and the injury things, it might be might be better to to, to pick a, a back on the on the bench so he's tiring defenses to come on and. We all saw what Woodburn all can do off the bench against Bradford in the in in the, in the quarter final. So, yeah. and as I say, everyone wants to start a game, but. Um, to segue into a, a topical thing, Eddie Jones um, in Union don't call the bench players substitutes. He calls them finishers because they come on to finish the game. They come on to perhaps finish the job kind of thing. And especially in Union, uh, in, in, in league, because, because we are interchanges, you can come on back and forth. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily matter that much if you start the game or, or come off the bench kind of thing. You're still going to be involved. Apart from Ben Tim's at witness, but we'll we'll gloss over that. Um, hey, he was involved. Not for long, but he was involved. <laughs> yeah, but well, anyway, I'm, I'm still a bit I'm miffed about <laughs> anyway, that. To be honest, yeah. but yeah, the, the main thing is he's definitely going to be involved in one way, shape, or form as Wood Burnall. He's too good a player not to be. Uh, whether that is starting the game at full back or centre or wherever, coming on as a half back, he definitely will be involved. As we've kind of said before a long time, he is a is a jack of all trades, is 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 Wood Burn all. We thought he'd mastered fullback, he may well still master fullback, but um when you've got someone of the calibre of Scott Griggs with the with the experience he's got, especially coming into playoff rugby, it's vital. And he may well be a better foil for the likes of Robinson and Harris to go through there. I thought I think Griggs has said it in his interview, I thought Scott was really good coming into the line at the he right was, time. Yeah. So we've got more moves um, out of the back when we've got Scott Griggs at full back. Yeah. So it's kind of a strange one, isn't it? Do you put Woody at centre and then he he's you're relying on him and then you're losing either Worthington or McComb. So we've got um you know, an embarrassment of riches at the minute in, in many yeah. positions, which we haven't had for a long time. We've ended up putting back rows at centre and, you know, yeah. this guy here and that guy there. So oh, I, I don't think we can complain, but I do agree with Sean that Woody's earned his place. It's just a case of he needs to be, able, if you've got a, a 50% fit would burn all and a 100% fit other player, you've always got to go with a lad that's raring to go yeah. because that 50% can sometimes, as much as you want it to, 
and, and and it's brave that he does get out there and play. It can end up costing, not necessarily costing yeah. you a game, but putting you in in a position that you don't want to be. It, in. it, it can be a hindrance rather than a help, really. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, um, Con Robinson said, "Get the pen out." He's more than happy to. Um, uh, there you go. Have this penny, uh, kind of, um, to to sign uh, the contract. We'd love to to have you. As I say you you're still a young lad, even though you don't look it. Uh, <laughs> 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 tough paper round and all that. Um, but yeah, uh, we'd 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 love to see you at the at the club for many many years to come. Um, in that respect, there. Um, Sean Neal's also said McGrath over Tibbs. Well. Depends on fitness, doesn't it? And with yeah. M- M- McGrath, McGrath was uh, running water, water on and that sort of thing. And again, we don't know what happens in training. Like, like you we said, we don't before. know the fitness levels yeah. at the end of the day. You, you it could be busted. You said before, Rick, that according, according to players, obviously you're, you're you're closer to 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 the action than I am. That Ben Tibbs has always been like the fir- one of the first there of such a uh, enthusiastic trainer and stuff um maybe he's getting what he deserves ben well Grixie fan. said it that he's he's always trained the house down he yeah. trained the house up and uh, and showed up really well all year so yeah he's getting his chance it's another one of those was that a perfect game if McGrath is carrying a knock or suffering the after effects of whatever it may be do you play him against Swinton at the at the detriment of a bigger game of Feverston away maybe not that was the perfect game for Tibbs to show what he can do, and he did it. He did his job, so I think it bodes well for the future. I think he signed for two years when we got him, so it bodes well for next year yeah. that he can come in when needed and, and put in <clears throat> a good performance. Like I say, he's got more tries than Greg Worthington. He's yeah. only played two games. Yeah, so. exactly, and and he's a very, very young lad. He's, he's his second or third game of senior rugby in his Professional life. Professional rugby, yeah. Yeah, so it's obviously a big learning curve. So he's got time on his side. Um, is McGrath a, a better player than Tibbs? Possibly. We've seen more of him. I do like McGrath as a player, but picking player on form and Tibbs is, is doing nothing wrong at the moment. He's, he's just been so unlucky with injuries as McGrath. Every yeah. time things get in a run, he always gets a little niggle and stuff. And, and also form as well. Um, we're also missing out Nick Rawstone as well. He's, he's, he's injured as well. Um, he keeps getting niggling injured as well. And a fit Nick Rawstone is a, is, a, is a massive weapon in our side. So... If we can get our injuries sorted, then we've we've got one hell of a shot to playoffs. So well, that's yeah. it. It's now about keeping them healthy and fit and ready to go for the playoffs. Yeah, we need to finish third, but if you end up losing half your squad and you end up going to say we did have Haven who were in form come to the Shea or whatever it might be, you've got half your team out. You end up putting yourself in a more difficult position. Yeah, for the sake of not having to go to France or whatever, we're gonna have to go there eventually if we want to get promoted. So yeah. Yeah, true, and as we we've, we have got lots of options. With a so-called skinny squad, we have got lots of different options, there, and that's where utility value does come into it, really. Um, and you mentioned like back rows going to centre. Ed Barber, he's 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 equally adept at both. Um, Zach McComb can cover many positions in the back. So can Salty. So can Woodburn All. So can Grix play full back and out back. We've got loads of stuff. We've got Tangata who can play prop or loose. Fairbank the same. We've got loads of stuff there. It would be nice to get. S- some new faces in if there are any notice that um newcastle has signed uh tom spencer who would have been a great signing for us he's a he, I've, I've always rated him ex super league prop there uh obviously bradford have got um uh, massy matongo from from, yeah. from from all um maybe they've got room on the cap we don't know what what's going on there um but we've just got to trust I don't know, it's a bit of a cliche at the moment and not a great one if you watch football, but trust the process. You've got to trust the, the, the guys that have done it all year um, to, to, to do the job going forward. So hopefully um, that will be the case. Um, Just in time, the next comment. Yeah, Nathan Field. Thanks for joining Good us, mate. Nathan. Uh, evening, chaps. Evening. Uh, what are your thoughts reference our current squad size with hopefully more games with the playoffs? Do we need more bums on seats? Um, first question: Current squad size? Yeah, we we, we could do it more, I and mean, just just simply to cover for any knocks or injuries or anything like that. Um, but it's very difficult at the moment. It's it's are there good enough players out there available? Would, would you want to risk a young Super League kid who's unproven to to come in and take the place of someone who's done it for us all year? Don't know. Do they improve us? That's exactly. Got to be question yeah. number one. There's no point just having someone for the sake of it. Yeah. Oh, not sure. Yeah. Exactly. You see, you could dip into League One to find a gem there, but again, uh, are they capable of stepping up to 
a top championship club, which we are. We're a top championship club. Make no bones about it. Let's not be modest about this. We're third in the league and hopefully going for for a grand final here. So what, would a League One player suffice? I don't think they would. Would a young Super League kid who's not played much senior rugby in the same milk as Ben Tibbs would? Ben Tibbs is doing very well. Um, but he's not been in, in the furnace of playoff rugby and that sort it's of thing. It's not just that as well. That That's a lad that's come in during pre-season, had a full year full to get year, used to yeah. the systems, not just chucking him in for one or two games here or there. And then you you might take him on loan, pay his wages and not end up using him. Then, yeah. then what happens? You know, you're know, you looking and saying, well, that was a stupid signing. So, uh, Personally, I think the squad is just about on the edge of where it needs to be. But yeah. We'll get Leroy back from his ban. We'll get Elliot back next week after his COVID stuff. And obviously, Tangata's back and played on Sunday. So yeah. we're going to start getting a few bodies back. And I think if we do that, we should be all right. And also, let's learn the lessons of history. Um, 2015 with Marshall, very small squad. And we got the momentum and we did very, very well. 2016. The difference, brought... can I just say, the difference about 15 was we were able to use the loan market from Super League and other places when, as and when True. needed. We've got Danny Craven who had a massive impact on that. We haven't been able to do that because Super League have been playing Sunday, then Wednesday, then yeah. Monday the week after, then Thursday. So they just don't, there aren't the players out there at the minute to improve us. Yeah, but but the the point I'm making is that when we yeah. have made our squad bigger and given choices in that, it's it's probably we've, we've probably been paralysed by choice rather than going with gut instead of having yeah. the cho- choice taken away, which is probably the best choice, thinking, oh, we need to keep him fresh or whatever. Because sometimes playing people who are busted a little bit is a good thing because they're kind of battle-hardened and they're ready to go into it, where someone who's kind of fresh yeah. might be too... F- fresh, if you know what I mean, might be too kind of clean and that's that sort of thing. Makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's, in my head, it does. Whether you guys think so, I don't know. Um, in terms of the second one, in terms of more bums on seats, yeah, we definitely do need that. Um, anyone who's seen the um, the the stuff that Halifax Foundation, especially, been put on with, with with Jack Duffy on there with the summer school, the the the, the foundation stuff they're doing, you've not noticed that they've all been wearing T-shirts advertising the the Batley game at home, which is our next home game and the last home game of the regular season. Hopefully, that kind of effort does pay off and we do get a bumper crowd down there. Um, don't know what the crowd was against Swinton. It did seem very very sparse to be honest with you. But again, bank holiday weekend, a lot of people go away last weekend before kids go back to school yeah. but like we talked before well back of a disappointing loss at Widnes yeah. where exactly going to bring everyone down exactly we, we, we were talking of, well well off air yeah. <laughs> it was just where we were supposed to go on uh, about kids going back to school and it's kind of easier to sort out weekend plans when, when they are there and that and as I say it, it's we've had a very very good season and it's just, it's just a kind of not necessarily a celebration but kind of finish off season but then look forward towards the playoffs really because we'll get one at least one home game in the playoffs hopefully if we do finish third uh, and hopefully we, we we get a big crowd in well, for I think if we finish well. fourth we'd get a home playoff as well we just have the right. tougher side of the draw won't we yeah. so no no true yeah and t- speaking of tough Chris Kirsch has come back our last three games are probably the toughest games of the season I totally agree Absolutely playoff right. eliminator playoff semi-final and million pound game will be the three toughest games of the year <laughs> totally agree like that like that but yeah Seriously, if ever away, Whitehaven away, Batley at home wouldn't necessarily be one that you say is tough, but last game of the season, it's just bonkers out the tables. It's, it's like a third, fourth place shootout if, if, if it well, all comes out. That depends it. how the results go out. I'm pretty yeah. sure there's there's other games in the league this year that uh, this year, this weekend, that are sort of around. I don't Batley play Bradford this weekend, uh, I believe. Possibly, yeah. Something, I, I'm, I'm sure everyone sort of plays around each other, so it could be a okay. go to Feven win and. Batley lose out or Bradford lose out and we could be set in that third place before we know it and then we can rest players as much as we can so yeah. who knows it's, it, I love the fact it's still all to play for yeah. at the start of this year where we thought we wouldn't have a season and then we wouldn't be able to watch it around oh, exactly. who would have thought we'd be sat here complaining that we didn't have players and crowds <laughs> and whatever yeah. the fact that we even have a, ga- a game at all is amazing so I'm still staying positive from all that oh, Mr both, Positivity Positive rugby definitely oh. uh, ba- Batley v Whitehaven Bradford v Toulouse Featherston v Halifax there you go three absolute that's, blockbusters that's the there. top six playing each other at the minute right uh, yeah uh, I think London are 
six at the moment, or is it Whitehaven? I but yeah, Whitehaven. Oh, they jumped up, yeah. yeah. Well, as I say, Batley, you would fancy Batley at home to Whitehaven, but what Whitehaven are doing is what we saw on Sunday. They are making their home ground, the recreation ground, an absolute fortress, and it's going to be very, very tough in in in, in a week or so when we go up there. But it always is tough up there. They're on a winning streak now. Aren't yeah, they? yeah. The hot team was we were a couple of weeks ago. So a couple of ex fax lads in uh, Chris Taylor and Liam Cooper there as well. So um, more motivation there. But um, it's a great league, though. Like you said earlier, yeah. I tell you what's amazing. If you look at like the highlights that are coming out, you see some of the tries scored in the championship, yeah. the length of the field, and doing this, and then you're seeing Super League crash ball at the line. Oh. Which which is more entertaining to watch? On it, but anyone who had the the unfortunate time of watching <laughs> Castleford v Wigan. Anyone who watched that, you need to watch Championship Rugby. Obviously, we're preaching this converted here, but I've I've said to people who watched it, the, the people at work have gone, "Oh, I turned that Castle Wigan game off." They said, "Well, come watch Championship Rugby. You won't get you won't get any games like that at all." Um, it, it was awful game, but then Swinton game that, that was exciting. You've got other games there as well. Um, so I, I, I guess the the White Ever win this game was kind of offset. Um, with the fact that Witness only took um, 16 players up, which is is slightly concerning, but I think their season's over now. I think they've got no chance of making playoffs, unfortunately. But hey ho, uh, Witness has lost his hour game. Um, let's get back to these comments. Um, Sean Ewell says, We missed a big forward with Leroy and Tangata out against Witness. We have a small pack. Yeah, yeah we did. Um, hopefully, it was just a one game blip, like we said last week but I completely take your point on board there um, yeah but it, it, any team's going to miss out um, Leroy and Tangata but they're back now Leroy is back against uh, Featherston this, this Sunday refreshed so. as well having exactly. a chance to have a break and yeah for if, sure we've got essentially what could be six games to get promoted now and it's yeah. kick on and uh Yep, definitely. Get into him. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, he also come back as well. Regarding crowds, it seems to have increased, I think, by 500 last time around. We would have had 1,100 against Swinton, 2,100 against Bulls, an estimated 500 Bulls fans. Yeah, definitely. C completely get that. Personally, I think we should be doing more. I've, I've said it before. I think we should be really doing more to capture um, market their football isn't doing too great at the moment, although they won on the weekend. Um, but also, just people who just... I've got nothing to do really. They just they need something to do with the weekends and stuff. The holidays aren't fully opened up. Weather ain't too cracking at the moment. Um, get them down the shade. Get the family down. It's it's. I think I think the club needs to be doing more in that respect. But as I say, with the t-shirts that they're doing on this summer school, hopefully that is the the start of something there. Something really really simple yet effective. So uh, that's a great one there. Uh, Peter Wood, that's joining us, yeah, Pete. Pete. Uh, yep, yeah, he's 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 kind of jumped on the fixture there, Bradford play to lose, Batley play White Big Haven. six weekend. Yeah, and again, nothing is televised. Nothing televised, no exposure whatsoever. It's absolutely Bam. criminal. Not the criminal there. Uh, Chris Kirsch makes a very, very good point. And hopefully people won't be off, put off by the Fev history and turn out to support the team on Sunday. Here, here. Here, here. Yep, I'm, I'm com I, I get what people think about the about the the history about Fev and, and obviously this season they've had fighting at the, at, the, at the ground and stuff but let's hope they've put an end to it let's all stick together let's all stick together in that stand behind the post um, and if they, they if they choose to come to us that's that's on their that's on their head we, we're not going anywhere we're going to get behind the team let's, we're not going to go any Fev fans or anything like that um, we're there to support the boys in well they'll play in black I presume black and black and yellow on, on, on I Sunday I because they're playing navy don't they which yeah. is a darker blue so yeah, so, and yeah and at the Shea they, play, they played in blue That's as it. well so yeah hopefully blue and white proper blue and white with a panther proper blue on, and on, white. The, on, on the chest uh, but yeah get get there if you can um, so yeah, yeah. Pete Wood agreeing with us. Super League is over, coach. Just repetitive play. Championship is old school, more off the cuff. Totally agree. Yeah. Uh, Super League is very much percentage based, isn't it? And getting to your kicks. And yeah. All that. Apart from like again, the the, the oh. Saints the Saints Warrington game was the complete antithesis of that. It was fantastic. It was such a good game. And also the week before, who played the last, the went last week? And I thought, oh no, the whole derby. Hull KR, yeah. Whole, whole derby. Whole KR, yeah. yeah, definitely. They they. Did throw the ball about as well, but yeah, second v third in in the league, and it was like what it was like watching Championship rugby in a way. But that try that George Williams scored was absolutely top draw, and but you can only talk about that because it's on TV. Yeah, oh, out for the games that we've seen this year, 
Halifax against Batley at Batley, amazing. Yeah. Halifax against Widness at the Shea. These are the games that we've seen. Halifax against Bradford at the Shea. Yeah. Halifax against Bradford at Dewsbury. Yeah. Unbelievable games that, unless yeah. you were there watching it or watching it on the highlights afterwards, you people wouldn't know it happened. And, and they put to shame some of these five drives and a kick Super League games yeah. that I've seen that have just been diabolical that are putting people off the game. Yeah, definitely. Com completely agree there. Completely agree. Jake Connor said that for the tongue-in-cheek remark uh -huh. from Eddie Jones, uh, Rob Uni is boring. Well, Super League's boring a little bit. So well, let's see how that develops. Um, Chris Curse, 95% of people that go to the football don't go to the rugby and vice versa. Both clubs to work together could gain a further thousand in the ground for both clubs. Absolutely. I've... I've been put off by comments that Halifax Town fans have made towards myself being a rugby fan. I would go, I would go down and support Halifax Town. I'm a local team. Um, I don't necessarily follow. I don't support a football club as, as per se. But I'd get well, mind you, I'm going to Bradford City on Saturday. So I'm 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 a glutton for punishment. What is it? That, that I'm, I'm I'm beating myself to prepare myself to go to Fev and that sort of thing. But yeah, but yeah, if if the if the clubs work together and it's not unique to Halifax by any stretch of the imagination, or does feel Town and, and the Giants don't get on, Wigan Athletic and Warriors don't get on. It's just one of these things where if a team shares a, a, a stadium with their other sporting neighbours, then you just don't get on. And the, yeah, I, I, I've never got why the fans don't like it. There's another really. thing though, like some people that, that watch rugby follow the rugby league because they're not fans of football and vice versa with the football yeah. and rugby. So yeah, you might get a couple of thousand extra, but you're not going to win everyone over because some people no. are just like, look, look, it's not my game. Oh yeah, true. I, I've, I've tried my damnedest to get my friends who are football fans come to rugby and they just don't like it. They, th they, they, they think it's boring. Well, I think football's boring. It's, I it's, think Formula One and golf's dull, yeah. but some people swear by it and pay thousands to go watch it each to their own. Yeah, exactly. Horses it's for courses. It is horse for courses. Some people like NFL and they need their heads checking really bad. <laughs> Season starts a week today, I oh, can't wait. But anyway. You're on about boring and strategic players and over coaching or whatever. But there's more coaches oh, than players. There's, this there's the more coaches on players on the sidelines. What's side this? Line. The most profitable sports league on earth? Yeah, billion. Every every club worth more than a billion dollars. But now, don't worry about it. It's boring and the, it's still the Yankee most dude. watched sport on earth. But yeah, Yankee yeah. Doodle oh, Dandies. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Pete Wood, uh, Peace All seems to be doing well with gigs well, in general presentation. Perhaps handsome promotion leaflets down there. Give us some. We're going to watch the Cribs tomorrow, aren't yep, we? Again? Yep, definitely. If anyone's got a, a, a 7XL shirt that fix, fix, fix me to go to go watch it, I will gladly wear my Halifax stuff um, <laughs> on there. Uh, I'm going out to Tugan. I'm watching Kaz Chiefs the, oh, yeah. next weekend as well. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, spot it, on about that. It, anyway. it does seem to have to say that, that our rebrand for the Panthers actually took place at the Peace Hall. Surely there should have been some kind of agreement, some partnership to say, hang on, any sort of Saturday, every time I've gone down to the Peace Hall for a few drinks on a Saturday afternoon, ever, it's been packed, it's yeah. been rammed. Get there with whatever our mascots are called. Get a couple of players down there. They'll, be, they'll absolutely love it. And get 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 faces there. I don't it's... think we've got the, the staff that, that are, that are going to do it on a Saturday though. We'll, you'd be relying on volunteers and I'm sure there's some people watching that would be up for doing it but yep. they need the stuff provided. The club needs to take a lead on that, don't they? So I'm sure do. it's something that if anyone from the club is watching that they'd be interested in doing and pushing forward and yeah, I just think they're a bit overworked this year. This year's a bit of a write-off in it, but it's definitely something to look for in the future. Of course, yeah. Uh, Nathan Field and Sean Newell have come with very similar points. Uh, your thoughts, gentlemen, on our current infatuation with Hull KR players? I don't think it's current. We've signed Scott Morell from uh, Hull KR. Um, Hull KR have taken players of us before. They've, they've, they've had Chris Chester, Jim Gannon. Ben Fisher. We, we've signed Stanley Jean and Michael A. Zoo from Hull KR as well. It's it, we, We're share and share alike. Uh, we're going to talk about Key's rumour. Is that the elephant in the room? It's not the elephant in the room. It's, it is a rumour. Matt Shaw's put it out there that Joe Keyes is potentially signing for us. Um, it's All I'll say is that he's two years in the making. It's two years too late. He should have. He, 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 he was on his way a couple of years back, but Hull KR gazumped us. He's coming to his rightful place. There and anything that makes the Bulls worse, I'm all for. Yes, definitely. Well, he's not he's not a Bradford player, is he? So, um, But yeah, there's lots of Bradford players who are leaving at the moment. Some could say it's a sinking ship. Oh, dear me. Um, uh, Sean Newell, Union Club is a massive market to tap into. I played three years at Halifax RUFC. More players there watched RL than RU, even though they played it. Absolutely. 
the, you make a very good point there, Sean, but also play people within the amateur clubs in Halifax. There's If you think of how many people are involved in rugby league on a weekend for junior teams, amateur teams, women's teams and girls' teams, and we can only get 1,500, 2,000 down the share, it is, that's where we really need to tap into. We need to make sure that we get on the side with all these clubs and make them come down to the share, get all the young youngsters, in plural, both genders, and um, men's and women's teams coming down to the share and build, build those bridges, because that, that is that is the golden goose. I think there were plans in place to do that, weren't they? Every, every, Pre-COVID, game, every yeah. home game was going to be a community club-sponsored sort of day where yeah. they come down and take over, but obviously COVID. And this, don't forget as well, we've had a lot of upheaval at board level. We've had directors yeah. come in and leave, and this guy's doing this, and this, this. Like I said, I believe that in terms of like the admin side of it, it's a little bit of a write-off this year. It's a bit too late to jump on. We need to yeah. be just looking and trying to promote individual games to, to mass audiences as much as we can, trying to get the Batley game sold and the whoever, we if we do finish third, fourth, that home game is in the playoffs. And then from there, we need to be looking at this winter as like, right, now we're a year into the Panthers rebrand. We know what works and what doesn't. We, we should have some market research back, hopefully, if they've been doing it. And we know what better to do next year yeah. so that when the post-COVID world and we know where we stand with all these things, we can just go bang, bang. Make your yeah. plans in October, <clears throat> November this year yeah. for April, May next year. Exactly. And start promoting it now. Yeah, definitely def- completely agree with you. It's been extremely difficult to get stuff done this year because we didn't. Uh, we had games behind closed doors for half, half the year and when we, when we came back, we had restrictions. Less said about those, the better. Um, but yeah, next next season, well, now and next season, hopefully that's the end of restrictions there. Hopefully that is the where we can properly, properly full steam ahead and getting this Panthers rebrand into the imagination of people of Colladale, really. And like, I will say one thing, though. Like, I don't know if you've got any of the Panthers merchandise, but I've been walking around town and the amount of people that have seen yep. it and been like, oh, I heard about that. I used to watch them back in the Blue Sox days, blah, blah, blah. And it gets them talking, so it is working slowly, but surely yep. turning I, the key. I see, I've seen more people in Panthers gear than I ever did with just standard RLFC yeah, gear as well. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And, 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 and more and more people like gyms and stuff like that. So the more stuff that they can get in the shop where like people can wear vests or shorts or whatever in gym videos, as you can tell, I'm in the gym at the moment. Um, but yeah, um, long may it continue in terms of that building that momentum of, of, of building the brand and getting more bums on seats and feet on terraces there. Um, as Linda Kinson and, and Sean, you said, plenty of volunteers to do it. Linda Kitson, absolutely right there. The supporters trust, they are a merry, merry band of loyal folk who who do volunteer loads and loads of their time to do it. Um, I just think more people need to do it. It's just, it's, it's with a great respect to the world there, Linda. I know exactly, you'll know exactly where I'm coming from. It's the same old faces, it's the same old people who do it. We need to branch out. And Sean, you'll say, if peace all provide, be it, I'll hang about on a Saturday. Yeah, why not? Let, let's... Let, let's let, let's let's do that. I'm more than happy to let's get him a bottle <laughs> of scrumpy jack <laughs> and a pipe. Let, let's not turn it back into the old piece hole where all wine noise <laughs> used to hang out or whatever. But yeah, I, I get your point there, Sean. Yeah, um, there are lots of alcoholic refreshment places in the peace hall who would gladly do that. Even putting up posters and stuff, just simple things. I when when I was growing up, used to go to chip shops and sh- and and corner shops and and all that sort of place where they just had pictures up and with fixtures on. Yeah, and you just had that all, all the time. And that, and that's what needs like to happen. I say, really. we, we never really got chance to get going this year of all that. I believe they have plans yeah. for it all, and then COVID obviously laid waste to that and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So. Hopefully, as I say, they, they, like, like you said, there's, 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 there's plans afoot to, to really kick into gear next year and then hit the ground running there. Um, it's just in terms of what we can do on the... Because if we've then got something to sell to people when we're going out and doing this, oh, how did they do last season? Oh, we, we, we either got to the million-pound game or yeah. we were so close, we were one game away from promotion or we were... Oh, yeah. oh, do you think they can go one better next year? Absolutely. Right, well... Come and find out. Get, get on yeah. the bandwagon and that's the time to do it. Tell so. your friends. Tell your friends. Absolutely. Uh, Lyndon Grady, thanks for joining us hey, again, Lyndon. Uh, even guys win the playoffs. Other yeah, Panthers. Yes, definitely. Celebrate good times. Come on. Uh, anyone going to Magic this weekend? Unfortunately not. No, uh, I'm not. Um, Unfortunately, I've, we're going to Wakefield, aren't we, sir? I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to... 
bloody Bradford City. So yes, it is magic apparently. <laughs> but yes, I'll find that out. Um, I'm, I'm so jealous of York fans. York, York playing Newcastle on Friday night. How good a weekend would that have been? Going up, playing on Halifax, playing on Friday night, and going to watch Magic at week, Magic weekend at Newcastle for absolutely fantastic. And I've heard really good reports of Newcastle saying it's absolutely fantastic there as well. Um, uh, Lind- uh, and Hildred, yes. Uh, Thursday night rugby on Sky used to be epic. It did, and hopefully there is negotiations to get the, that, that thing going back there. Uh, and Lind hits him going back. The fixture, fixture photos paid for themselves as they had sponsors around the edge. As you can see, we've got sponsors for our Poxy podcast. Uh, Eclip- uh, hang on, there. Oh, hang on. yep. Hang on. We're not live. Energy. We're going to delay on that one. Yeah. Right away. Yeah. yeah. So, so Eclipse Energy and Delivery. Delivery. <laughs> <laughs> we are professional, obviously. Um, but yeah, um, if 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 people are prepared to put money into a poxy podcast like ours, I'm sure they want to put in onto a poster with a team, which can be plastered all around Coldale in chippies, bars, restaurants, shops, wherever. If you if you see things, advertising audience, it's subliminal messaging. If you see the brand or everywhere that you go, yeah. You're going to spread the Gets message to the psyche, doesn't it? And then obviously Lyndon's come back. I'm going to a, a, a Magic Weekend and I'll be wearing my Panthers shirt. You do right. Lovely stuff. Get more Friday night games from Stuart Tattersley. I'm sure that's something they'll look into. Anyway, let's move ahead to the weekend because yes. we haven't even really talked about it at all yet. No. Second versus third. Mm-hmm. The rivalry game. And, yes. Uh, it's... It's Featherstone away. It's a game that a lot of people circle in the calendar for different reasons. Some because it's, they're looking forward to it. Some because they're like, oh, that's the weekend I'll go and go to the garden centre or whatever. <laughs> Personally, I've not seen. I've been going for many years since all the, the original um, bother that we had. Not seen any trouble. No. Then you see things like the Witness game early after. But again, that's Witness fans. You know, the, the bit of an instigator there. So yeah, can't wait to get going. Um, what do you reckon, Ergie? Uh, I think we'll give it a really good go, but I think I think we are on to a, a, a loss. To be honest with you, uh, I'm a realist. Um, I'm a romantic. Uh, yes, that's a crib song. We've got to watch them. Yes, I mentioned. exactly. Um, just thought I'd drop that one in there. Um, but yeah, um, I think I think we'll have a good go, uh, but I think we've got. Too many busted bodies. Feather, Feather have signed players in. They, they've got a big squad, uh, and I think they'll want to put a statement out. But I think it's chess, not checkers. I think if we lose against Feather, it's not the biggest thing in the world. If we beat Whitehaven and Batley, it's academic. We need to beat those teams rather rather than kind of beating Fev. Obviously, it'd be great if we did beat Fev. We'll just beat them in the playoffs like we always do. Yeah, that's it. Beat them when it matters because they they seem to struggle in those big games. Don't they? <laughs> yeah, we've got a really good um, a really good record at Post Office Road. Like I think they beat yeah. us at the Shea every game for like 11, 12 years, and then we'd go there and smoke them. You know. I think we won 60 points one year and 50 of the next and 40 before. So, But this is a different Fev team. I think they're, they're putting some scores on teams. I think they'll... It's one of those, will they want to make a point ahead of the playoffs and put a marker down or will they put the cue on the rack and say, right, we've pretty much sewn second up now. We know for the playoffs that we need to rest bodies and, and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's a, it's a it's it's an intriguing battle, really. Yeah, I, I know that our lads will be up for it. You can say that oh, definitely. That we're in the playoffs and all that, but Fev, Fev, ways of, Fev Facts games are always battles and they're always really entertaining games as well, generally, yeah. apart from when there's like a... A freak fog like something I was out of a Stephen say, King novel. We, we've got a really good record when we can actually see the other side of the of the, of the stadium. When when it's foggy, then yeah, we've got no chance. But as I say, um, I'd, I'd love to be proved wrong. I'd love to be proved wrong. But I just think, and um, Nathan Field agrees with me. I think Fed are just too strong for us on this occasion there. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I, 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 I just think that. I'd love to be proved wrong. I know the players have a really good go and they'll want to make a statement. They're playing for places. That, that That's they're it, there. Yeah. Um, and, and we've got fresh Conor Robinson. He wanted to make a statement as well. I, th- I think he missed the um, the, the game against Fev. Well, of course he did, yeah, because of the I, first game. I believe with, that was the game that he got injured. Was he got injured in right? Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, because that was the last game we lost, wasn't it? Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, I'd, I'd love to say that we'll, we'll win, but I just don't think... Heart says facts, head says Fev. I'm going to say both facts. I think it's about time we wipe those smug smiles off their faces. They're going, 
They're going for the flat cap world record, which is the most pikey thing I've ever heard in my entire life. But they've got some really good strike players across the board. I really like that new Brown. I think he's he's a classy yeah. player. Craig, Craig Hall written down there and uh, the winger Gaz Gale seems to be scoring for fun doesn't he so and John Davis always seems to have yeah. a good game for him as well so but dangerous but we've got players we've got strike players we've got strike players exactly. we've got lads hitting form at the right time and, and I think they'll want to do this one for the fans you know as well mm -hmm. like, I think if we have a good turnout I, I my prediction is an eight point swing either way I, I don't see it being a runaway for either team wow and I really believe that we'll be more motivated to get the win than Fev will the thing that worries me is that Featherston have this really, really irritating pattern of um, not necessarily playing well in the first half and then completely running away with it in the second half. And that is my biggest fear that we, we seem to finish games all right, but like we did last week against Swinton, we had a really commanding first half, but yeah. we just came out after half time. Whether or not Featherston will have the same desperation, that sort of thing, I don't know. But that's my biggest fear, to be honest. And, and if form goes as everyone's expecting to, it's a preview for what could potentially be the game to get either side into a, a promotion yeah. million pound game. So it's a massive, it's a massive game for everyone involved, and I really hope that. Everyone puts the past behind them and gets over there and really gets behind the boys because they need it. It's going to be a tough game, but you know that fans there in numbers making a load of noise in yeah. that stand has a massive impact on the pitch. It always has done. Of course it does. And like I said, they, they might be going through some adversity themselves. They've had to bring in Alex Walker on loan because they lost, I believe, Chisholm's out, is he? Or someone's Ooh, is injured right. and they've had loads of injuries and all that sort of stuff. So you've got Sean Ewell's coming. Ferguson banned. Does it kick in this way? I'm not sure, mate. Mm. He was brought back from loan as they were short forwards. Yeah, they, they did Jews be dirty there. I thought that yeah, was a bit shocking. Uh, Linda Grady Fev, that's going to be a tough one, but I keep our discipline and who knows? Yep. Totally agree. Yep, we're going to have true. to play a squeaky clean game to get any anything out of it. Like you said, Nathan agrees with Mike. Unfortunately, I think Fev are too strong this year. But Sean agrees with me. I feel a performance coming together. <laughs> yes, lad, come on. It, it's, it's, it swings and roundabouts, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, yeah. Lyndon Grady wants That's someone to steal a fog machine from the Fev cupboard. Yeah. Beauty. Never known a day like it. Absolutely glistening sunshine over, in fact, as we get to Fev and it's like Silent Hill. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Anthony Hildred, who fresh from buzzing his chippy tits off, um, says play smart, rug big, go for the lucky play and punish them in defence. From the start, bully them. From the start, bully them as much as we can. Get in their face, get up there, and we will turn them over. Feb, just play out wide. That's what we have to watch for. Smart rugby, not daft rugby. If we have to play basic and simple, we do it. You know, well, yeah. That's the thing. We 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 we, we struggle to kind of adapt to opposition tactics at times to, to Halifax. But again. Hopefully, we learn from that there. Here um, we go. We can't lose now. Pete Wood's come back. My missus is a lucky mascot. She's not seen us lose yet. And taking her go. to a first away game. Come yes, on, Pete. Yes, there we go. So we know if we win, it's all uh, your your daughter's... Uh, your, Good your, lady. Your, oh, I was going to miss it. Sorry. Good my, lady. My, 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 my mistake. And if we lose, it's definitely her fault. It's well. your fault. <laughs> Dan's Hill just play like Toulouse did years ago. There's a second overlap every set near their attacking 30. Blind me. I think you need to be uh, uh, getting with Simon Griggs here. <laughs> They're not the fullback at the time. I can see Zach having some fun on Sunday. Well, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Again, there'll be lots of video analysis that have been going on this week, and hopefully we have got the the formula to beat Fev. Um there is there is kind of precedent for it. In 1895 Cup Final, York really took the game yeah. to them and they wobbled. They really did wobble, did, did Fev. And I, I thought York were in with a chance. But and that was York with a, a second rower at standoff and a centre at scrum half yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. It, it, was a, it was a funny old game, was that. Um, but yeah, um, I, I'm really, really excited for it. I'm, 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 I'm properly excited for it. Uh, as we should be for the, the, the game, second v third. Um, old rivals it's just got the, the right ingredients for an absolute classic and I, th I think there'll be points in it I think there'll be loads of points we can score tries for fun like what I've done we have done not necessarily for the last few weeks but we've just, we scored 48 on Sunday um, maybe we've got we're back in the groove and hopefully um, we, we hit the ground running um, 
I think that should be it now. Yeah. It's, it's getting a bit late. Sorry, we're a bit late. Late, late getting yeah, on. But blame Facebook, yeah. like I said. Ho- hopefully next week we'll be there. Um, next week we will start our Hall of Fame discussion because in a big private conversation we realised that Kyle Aronson is the last player to be inducted into Halifax RFC Hall of Fame, which is ridiculous. I mean, not that he's inducted, but that no one's been inducted in yeah. that time. We need to kind of know who de- who decides these things, what the criteria, and that sort of thing, because there are loads of players, not Dane Nerricks and. Nanny that, that people uh, <laughs> um, submitted online, but I'm sure there are lots of, of, of players there. Um, we'll leave Morel and Tyra off because they are still playing. Although you think, I don't think it matters necessarily that they have to be out of the game for so. The whole point for me is you induct them into your hall into the, your hall of fame, and that is a, a a way of promoting your club. You send them out into the community. This is a living yeah. hall of famer. Yeah. Why would you wait until they're old men? Yeah. And, and exactly. pass the prime before you go in and, and say, you know, it's like you sit, you show a young kid, oh, look, that Billy Boston over there used to be the best player yeah. in the world or whatever. What, that old man who sat in yeah. the corner with grey hair and stuff? Yeah. They can't equate it to it. Whereas if you say, that guy that's built like a brick shit house over there, yeah. well, yeah, that makes sense. I, I wouldn't mind watching him play. What Have you got his highlights and all that sort of yeah. stuff? So. But yeah, no. we are gonna we are gonna come on to it. I think Linda Linda Kitson's uh, tags Mark Preston. Yeah, he's on the list. But Definitely. like I say, we'll we'll have a full discussion about it at some point. I'm sure. But no, yes, uh, we'll stick with Fev for now. Do you want to just get those last two? Comments? Yeah, last two comments there. Anthony uh, um, says too big to handle. Oh, hang on. Two uh, to handle. That is the guy. There's no pace in attack on their props. Possibly, we shall see. And Sean, you'll say, think our scrambling defence wins my first away game of the season. Come on, the lad. And well, we know, and we know, we're going to win your first away game of the season. There we go. Uh, Pete's bringing his missus. So yep, happy days. It's, it's all the stars are aligning for it. The stars are aligning, and uh, us two are stars. Possibly, our uh, star, Sean for tonight but we are dwindling now I'm, I'm feeling tired Linda yeah. said I think the rules are they have to have finished playing for 10 years well rules are there to be broken Linda let's yeah, rewrite yeah, the yeah. rules and, and if that is the case we're in a modern age if that is the case there's a certain John Bentley who definitely needs to be in there but anyway that is for next week that's for discussion there get your discussion I'll put a post out for people to put their their discussions in and we'll properly discuss that next week after the, after the Feb game um, thank you very much for, for joining us as always folks it's really really good to see the numbers are increasing to say that it's an England football game and we were 20-25 minutes late uh, hopefully we'll get those um, tech issues sorted out uh, but uh, from myself Mike Haig from him Rick Farrell uh, thanks to Eclipse Energy and Good Delivery uh, thanks for joining us as always up the Fox Panthers come on the Panthers get Come into on. them get into them <laughs>